Hello, my name is Janice Barton and I'm from the University of Bristol in the United Kingdom. My talk today is about determining the source of the thermoelastic response from laminated composite materials by using digital image correlation. In thermoelastic stress analysis, an infrared camera is used to capture images from a cyclically loaded object. Usually this object is loaded sinusoidally and this means that we can fit a function such as shown here to determine T naught, the mean temperature, delta T, the range of the temperature change, and also phi, the phase of the temperature change. In the context of this presentation, the important quantity here is delta T, which is the thermoelastic response, and this is directly related to the sum of the principal stresses. In developing this equation, it is assumed that no heat transfer is occurring and that the temperature change occurs adiabatically. And the cyclic loading or the rate of the cyclic loading is used to reduce the thermal diffusion. In laminated composite materials, the lamina, the lamina in the stack are usually quite thin and they have different thermal properties. On top of that, there is a resin rich surface layer, which also contributes to the heat transfer. Depending on whether you use peel ply or not determines the thickness of this resin rich layer. And we can see here the thickness of the resin rich layer is much greater with the peel ply. To examine the adiabatic response and heat transfer characteristics in composite materials, we used three different laminate configurations, a 090 and a 90 naught stack, which had the same mechanical behavior, but different thermal properties, and a plus minus 45 degree stack, which is shear dominated. We simultaneously used digital image correlation and thermoelastic stress analysis to give us a measured delta, delta T upon T naught. And also we were able to derive um, an independent value of T, delta T upon T naught from the digital image correlation as we had measured the material properties. Our specimens were made from both glass fiber reinforced polymer and carbon fiber reinforced polymer. On the next slide, I am going to examine the effect of the different laminate configurations using calculated values and how they affect heat transfer. So here you can see the heat transfer um, for each in each specimen type um, with um, for the GFRP and the CFRP. And I've given the calculated delta T values here. The heat transfer is, is controlled by this heat transfer equation where T dot can be seen as the rate of temperature change that's occurring during the cycle. And this is related to the stresses and the rate of change of strain epsilon. If we increase the rate of change of strain by increasing the cyclic loading frequency, the left hand term becomes larger and therefore any heat transfer that's occurring reduces. The heat, the, the heat transfer in this case is conductivity, which is simply the thermal conductivity multiplied by the um, the, 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 the temperature gradient in the specimen. So let's have a look at each of our individual um, situations. So if we look at the GFRP, we can see that the thermal conductivity for our glass fiber polymers is very low. But we can also see that there's this little change in delta T between the plies. So this means that, that, that there can be no heat transfer and we maintain adiabatic conditions. On the other hand, we can see that with our, with our CFRP material, the thermal conductivity of the carbon fiber is higher and there are step changes in delta T at the ply interfaces. So at low loading frequencies, the response is, going to, is not going to be adiabatic. In our plus minus 45 degree ply, because the stresses 
in each layer are identical, we have adiabatic conditions. So once again, we can neglect the Q term. If we have a very thick surface resin layer, then we get a strain witness effect. So we can neglect the heat transfer term. If, we, if, the prop, if, if the response is coming from the entire laminate, we get a homogenized um, value of, um, of uh, a homogenized response through the stack. If delta T is occurring adiabatically, to check if delta T is occurring adiabatically, we can conduct our tests at different loading frequencies. So in my last slide today, I'm going to show you some sample results. This is for the glass fiber laminate, and we can see for our unpainted response, we, there is a constant response across the um, loading frequencies, which indicates adiabatic behavior is occurring. Interestingly, we painted some of our specimens on the peel ply side, and this resulted in a very thick layer of paint. And you can see as we increase the, the loading frequency, the response goes down. This is, this is expected. In our carbon fiber material, we can see that the thermoelastic response is changing, and it's changing from the response from the, 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 that can be related to the laminate, which is a kind of homogenized response through the stack. So that's indicating that heat transfer is taking place to the, um, to the individual surface ply um, value at the higher loading frequency, exactly as predicted. We looked at all the other cases and they all correlated with the predictions. So we think now we have, shown the um, established the source of the, the thermoelastic response categorically and come up with a calibration procedure that allows you to determine for your particular laminate manufacturing process, fiber volume fraction, etc., how to determine which loading frequency you need to use to conduct tests. More importantly, it allows you to determine what is happening at lower loading frequencies, because if you cycle composite materials at high loading frequencies, you risk viscoelastic behavior occurring. So this allows us now to be able to conduct thermoelastic stress analysis on complex components and be able to interpret results quantitatively. Thank you for listening to me.